<laughs> I wonder where Jeff's been. <laughs> Thank you so much and welcome again to Ride or Dressage Explained Part 8. I firstly just wanted to say, guys, it was my dream that you would like this particular series. This series is what's actually going to get you to your goals more so than anything else because it's basically like being in the barn with me and just asking me questions. So thank you so much. I nearly fell off my sofa yesterday. Even Tash did. We were looking through last week's videos. We went, Dressage Explain was number one. I'm like, yes. Everyone's hearing me. Everyone's getting it. Yay. So thank you. Um, let's get into our questions for this week. Jennifer Hill. You got the prize, so we saved you to last. I think it's fair, isn't it? So you, Jennifer Hill had a great question. How does she stop her strong, heavy horse to stop or slow down with a light aid? Okay, it's a tricky one. It really is. Now, I don't know how tall or how heavy you are, Jennifer, but I know 100% you're not as heavy or tall as your horse. Your horse is bigger, a million percent. Therefore, you will never, ever, 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 ever win via strength or having a tug of war with them. It doesn't work. You can't get angry, you can't get violent, you can't pull harder. Anything involving pulling won't work, okay? So that's the first thing you're just gonna get out of your head. Next thing is to remember, if your horse is forward and heavy, it's not a bad thing, okay? Forward, is great because you've got energy, you just have to contain it. And heavy, in my book, is way better than light because at least he's taking contact, yeah? So if you can move the shoulder up and get his hind leg under, everything should solve itself. So in the early stages when you're riding a horse like this, it can feel debilitatingly like you're not getting anywhere. And I know that feeling when I've ridden these sorts of horses in the past without my knowledge that I have now. So please, truck on. It's probably a really good horse. And sometimes really good horses are a bit more difficult. Okay, so that's the first part. Second part is how do we solve it, okay? So if he's really heavy and really forward, just abort mission for halting. Don't even think about it yet. Don't think about going from canter to halt or walk to halt or trot to halt. Don't think about that, okay? Think about if it was a slow horse, you wouldn't go, I can't get him to go anywhere, now I wanna do a working pirouette. You wouldn't do that because it'd be an unrealistic thing to ask. It's the same with a forward horse. You've gotta work backward a little bit, okay? So if your horse is forward, use the lines in the arena to get him slower versus trying to make him slower. So use physics to do it versus your strength or even your ability necessary. And I'll give you a little thing. I was doing four loop serpentines in here with Mowgli, the little thoroughbred I'm doing for the channel. Toby will attest to this, he was watching. We had a bet, I'm pretty sure I won it. I'm pretty sure. We'll see, the end of the week and then we'll see. So we're doing four loop serpentines and when I go to the right with him, he doesn't like to do it, so he starts to bugger off on me. And rather than trying to pull him up, I just turn a very small 10, eight metre circle and leg yield his quarters out at the same time so he can't tank off, but equally I'm still sending him the message of connect, because as you do a leg yield on a circle, the hind legs cross, okay? So if you're going on a straight line, hind legs are like this. If you ride a circle, the hind legs are like this, but there's some bend in the rib cage. So already that brings the hind leg closer to the front leg, just because the rib cage is bent. Yeah, I'm gonna do something ridiculous and get down on the ground. Come down here, Toby. Ugh, Sandy. Okay, so straight line, okay. Oh, I put my arm out there so I put my hand in it. Then I bend my rib cage to make the circle. And you see, because I bend the rib cage to make the circle, my shoulders are closer to my hind legs than they were before, okay? Then if I add leg yield, I'm pushing the quarters sideways, it splits the legs like this, and this is the line you end up with. Your hind leg ends up closer to your shoulder. Do you see that? Yeah? So if I do that standing up, yeah, like it's the last one. If I do that standing up, 
Ah, okay, so ride a straight line. My horse starts to bugger off on me or, get, or even just get really, really heavy. Turn a circle. By turning a circle, my rib cage bends, gets my shoulders closer to the hind leg. That's what we want. That will lighten him off a bit. If that's not enough, I move the quarters outside of the shoulders. Okay, and look what happens to my inside hind. If I do that, it has no choice but to cross. And if it's crossing, if I'm leaning here, what happens to this leg? It comes off the ground completely. So if I want to stay actually moving and not falling over or needing to do this, yeah, I have to put more weight in my outside hind leg just to be able to continue, yeah? How cool is that? So it's understanding the physics of it. So the heavier he gets, the more you push his quarters out and keep him on a circle, okay? The other thing you've got to remember is when you're moving their body like this so that they can't lean on you, don't give them something to lean on. So if they pull your reins, and you feel yourself, as they pull the reins, you feel yourself saying, no, I want to stay here. Let them go. Do that exercise and let them go. Let both reins go. Not like completely, not literally, guys. <laughs> Riding along, horse starts pulling me. Let go. Let go. Let go. Let go. Let go. Let go. Make it almost electric. So he can't balance on the bit. He can't balance on his forehand because you don't give him a surface that he can hold on to. Right, come over here. <laughs> again. Okay, now, just lean back against me and just lean now. Pull as hard as you can, you won't hold, pull me down. Right? So Toby's pulling as hard as he can and I'm saying, no, don't pull me. What happens if I let go? <laughs> Do you see that? He wasn't expecting that. We haven't rehearsed this. And he's, he even made the noise. Do it again, pull back against me. If I let go, yeah. and now I won't let go, so just pull against me and then just try to keep pulling against me. Yeah. The more I give and take, he just can't. Yeah. yeah? Does that make sense, guys? So you just don't give them something to hang on to. It sounds really overly simplistic, but it is that easy. But our nature is when they hold, ugh, to hold back, drive it through. Sorry, I can't do that. I don't know how you guys could. Just let go, often and little. Let go, let go, let go, let go, let go. Never give them a reason to be able to hold. I hope you enjoyed that, guys. Our videoing, we were trying to be quite cool today. We had a bit of time. Come on in, because Toby was pretty epic. How's it go high when Toby's here? <laughs> Thanks, Toby! <laughs> Bye, guys. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed that. Mwah!